I haven't been given any favors. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, and I, you shouldn't expect them, honestly. Uh, I fought Mario Batista, who's going to be, like I said, I've been saying it since the matchup. That is a top 15 prospect right there. You know, um, I took him for three rounds on six days. He is murdering people. Let's just, let's get that out the way. He is hurting people. Raul Rosas Jr., who is only 18 years old, holds the record for becoming the youngest UFC fighter ever. But it's obvious that he picks up things rapidly. After finishing Jay Perrin with a rear naked choke at 2 minutes and 44 seconds of the first round, Rosas took to the microphone at the T-Mobile Arena and performed something that a great number of his much older contemporaries have done throughout the years. Dana, 50 G's baby, Rosas yelled at Dana White, who's the president of the UFC. After winning the night's final preliminary fight, Rosas was entitled to ask for a post-fight bonus, and he didn't do anything wrong by making this request. In fact, his request was quite reasonable. He was the focus of close attention for the entire week leading up to the bout, and when he finally did enter the cage, the spectators gave him rousing applause and cheered him on. When Perrin entered the combat, he did so in hopeless position. If he prevailed, he triumphed over a teenager who was 18 years old. If he were to lose, he would have been defeated in his promotional debut by the youngest fighter in the history of the UFC. Rosas, on the other hand, appeared to have no trouble fitting in at all. He instantly grabbed Perrin out of the way and threw him on the ground. As soon as he did, he was instantly riding on top of Perrin's back. After that moment, it was only a question of time before Rosas was able to emerge victorious. As soon as Perrin made his move, the massive audience once more began to commotion. He told Joe Rogan in the cage after his victory, I have no jitters, no pressure, and I feel free, and I'm just doing what I want to do. And he added, I'm doing what I love to do. Right now though, tonight, I just wanted to introduce myself because I'll be there, he said. Before the bout, he had stated that his objective is to become the youngest undisputed champion in the UFC history, passing John Jones in that regard in 2011 when he was only 23 years old, when Jones won the light heavyweight belt. Rosas has a lot of breathing room to catch up to Jones, even the champion of the Bantamweight division, Aljamain Sterling, was taken aback by Rosas' performance and stated in a tweet that he would have moved up the featherweight division by the time Rosas was ready to fight him. Given the amount of time that he has left to break Jones' record, he needs to give some thought to the possibility of being the youngest person to ever win a championship in two different divisions. It seems absurd to conceive of an 18-year-old in such terms, yet Raul Rosas is one of the very few 18-year-olds who fits that description. A couple of early punches were taken by Rosas Jr. before he went to work with his high-level wrestling to take Perrin down and keep him there for the rest of the fight. In the end, he was successful in sinking in a rear naked choke submission, after which he used his post-fight interview to ask the president of the UFC, Dana White, for a bonus of $50,000 so that he can buy a minivan for his mother. The teenager claims that he was anxious before the biggest fight of his life because it's just the first step on a road that he anticipates will end with him wearing the UFC gold around his waist. However, the fight itself is only the first stage. In addition to this, he stated, This is crazy, but I knew I was going to be here, and right now, I'm simply living the dream. I didn't feel any nerves or pressure, so I just did what I love to do without any hesitation. Tonight, I just wanted to introduce myself because I'm going to be going after that belt. Rosas Jr., who was only 17 years old at the time, increased his perfect professional MMA record to 6-0 in September with a decisive decision win against Mando Gutierrez on Dana White's Contender Series. Following the boss of the UFC's observation of the Mexican teenager's performance, the boss of the leading MMA organization offered him a contract, making him the youngest fighter to ever join the promotion. White was not one of the individuals who believed that Rosas Jr. should be allowed to compete in the UFC because of his age. Despite the fact that he had a really outstanding performance, he went on to say that based on what he had just witnessed, this kid is ready to fight in the UFC. I can't say enough good things about this young man. He's in a class all by himself. The number of combatants that were attempting to kill me while exclaiming, oh my god, this youngster is telling the truth. He's for real. This is some serious talent. After seeing Rosas Jr. perform so well in his official debut, the head of the UFC must be fairly pleased with the decision to sign him. Rosas was able to bridge the distance quickly, grab onto Perrin, and bring the fight into Perrin's world on the ground in a short amount of time. The rookie to the UFC did not exhibit any signs of apprehension as he grabbed the back of his opponent with ease and immediately began working for submissions despite Perrin's best efforts to play defense. As Rosas searched for the rear naked choke, he did so in a methodical manner, and Perrin did his best to fight the hands that were holding him in order to break free. A rough go is, you know, my last fight with AQ was more about like pacing. I was more paced for a five round fight instead of a three round fight. 
Um, so we, we adjusted that, and I think it was just growing pains. That's really what it is. And once I start rattling off this win, um, it'll just keep going from there. So, um, you know, you get caught up in the moment, you get caught up in everything, and, you know, you work for 14 years to get to the place, then you get there, and you're like, well, I don't know what to aim for now, you know? And that was kind of where I was at, so. It was ultimately fruitless because Rosas eventually wrapped his arms around Perrin's neck to lock in the submission. And as soon as he tightened his grip, Perrin had no choice but to tap out. It was ultimately futile because Rosas eventually wrapped his arms around the neck to lock in the submission. It's hard to see Rosas coming to class in high school not so long ago, and then going on to win in the UFC, but that's precisely what he's done. Given his age, it's hard to imagine that the UFC will rush to thrust him into the thick of things in the Bantamweight division just yet, but he does seem to be a possibility that's worth keeping an eye on for the future.